My name is Miranda Cook, and I'm an artist. I like to paint, make sculptures, um, puppets, and costumes. Anything that brings my feelings and creatures to life. I work with acrylic paints, clay, mostly the air dry clay, and um, fur like this. Um, I like to make childlike um, art in a primary school class style. That's where I started as an artist, and I've been doing it since I was three. And that was the first time I really enjoyed myself. Especially now, I express myself uh, with art as I had autism um, as a child, and I couldn't talk until I was four. And after that, that's how my art was a way to share my feelings with others. Um, my childhood art is what made me today. Um, I explore emotions in this residency and different colors might be different for others and I hope my work makes people think of that, think more of it. Um, I was inspired by the movie Inside Out, Pixar, and it showed that you, know, you can't always be happy, you can't be joy, you have to have the other emotions. And um, all the colors of the rainbow. Um, in this residency, um, I can do bigger art instead of very small. I use more materials here today and uh, during the week, like wood, because I've never used that before. So it, it made me use it more. Um, I'm still figuring out what I think and feel when I look at this artwork. The theme with other works, like my anxiety monster I made, and creature paintings I've done that also represent emotions and other mental um, health. Um, here at the Yara Sculpture Gallery, they are talking in a therapy room. Um, the setting brings my other works all together. Everyone just needs to let it out in these rooms. It's an emotional display, and this is an emotional display. I'm Patrick Tonks. Um, I like to make social comment in my art. I like to make object art as well. I like to use words often in my work because I also do poetry. Um, I'm a multi-medium artist, which means I like to use a lot of mediums to express myself. Um, I've explored different aspects of my psychosocial disability, including my experiences with PTSD, anxiety. I've also collaborated with my mentor, Alistair, to make an animation piece based on a positive aspect of schizophrenia that many people don't know about. I was wrongly diagnosed with schizophrenia originally. It's my homage to three friends who don't know each other and they tell me the same story about their experience of psychosis. The residency at YSG has allowed me to revisit watercolour and pen and ink and evolve my practice to become large scale and site specific. Um, having a studio space and a time frame has meant that I could make new work and having the support of my mentor has meant that I can explore new mediums like animation. Um, the pieces are directly related to where I want to be, um, also how I really am and how others perceive me. The homage to schizophrenia is also a homage to my nine years of being wrongly diagnosed. Um, with schizophrenia, schizoaffective and bipolar. Um, the ship's still out about diagnosis. I'm supposedly ADHD with severe PTSD, so being a contemporary artist of always and having to have varying abilities that keep changing as to depending on who's listening 
Um, it's been a great platform to be able to express that because normally in my contemporary life with art, I don't go there. I don't cross over from being a crazy artist to just being an artist because I'm both. So thank you very much, AOV, Yarrow Sculpture Gallery and also Yarrow Shire and all my friends and family who've made it possible. Thank you. My name's Margaret Bold. I've been diagnosed for schizophrenia since 1989. Been in and out of hospital. Last mission was almost. Eight years ago. And I'm quite an accomplished artist. I love doing watercolour paintings and doing sculptures and mosaics and photography. Quite a keen photographer as well. The paintings I did of are of birds and nature and I made the sculptures out of egg, dry clay and use acrylic paint, paint and varnish. It has helped a lot and Andrea's been lovely. Been busy working on I had some already done, but I did some at the start because I didn't have the clay yet. Then I decided to use air dry clay instead of uh, ordinary clay because the sculptures wouldn't have been ready in time to do the ordinary firings. And, and my sculptures were done just finished on Tuesday and I varnished them. They look nice and shiny. Very pleased with my work. Hi, my name is V. Uh, I'm 38 years old. Uh, I'm Mexican-American from Oakland, California and I've been in Melbourne for 12 years, um, and yeah, my project was Deep Sea Doom Scroll, was the title, and uh, I collaborated with a lot of different other artists. This is my first time doing any kind of sculpture stuff or mural stuff. Uh, I'm mostly a film photographer, um, but I'm working with a lot of friends, including people from the Eclectic Collective, which has been fun. Uh, yeah, about my uh, show, it's a cyber aquatic escapism experience. Um, and so there's a giant anglerfish inside and the lure of an anglerfish attracts other fish to it as being the only light in the deepest darkest part of the ocean and there are cell phones running that are people doom scrolling on the cell phones um, and i used it to represent how most of us uh, use the cell phones as a minor escapism tool sometimes a major escapism tool to escape the darkness of our days and lives and how we're feeling. Um, and in a way, the cell phone represents like the problem and the symptom of what's going on with us. Um, so it's a nice escapism, but also it's kind of slowly killing us. It makes uh, us feel a bit more disconnected, even though the connection is what we want, especially with things like social media. Um, and I also made the anglerfish itself look mesmerized by the cell phones, and it made me think of people like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and stuff like that, where um, you know, they're the ones who are creating and promoting a lot of this sort of tech will save us ideology when they themselves are quite mesmerized and buying their own sort of, uh, yeah, their own hype, you know? Like Elon Musk is a billionaire, could be doing anything else he wants in the world, but uh, he's still arguing with people on Twitter every day um, and doesn't seem to be able to escape his own addiction to technology and media, it's not providing that perfect escape that uh, we've all been promised. Um, 
So yeah, and the exhibition is uh, supposed to be touchy-feely. You can touch everything and experience it all, and that's also what I want from everyone in the world to be able to do more is to, yeah, be present and experience what's going on in the world around you and, uh, you know, touch the fish, touch yourself, touch the world around you, experience all the beautiful creatures and things in the zone. Uh, yeah, this is my first time ever having a residency or having any sort of studio space. And it's actually been a really cool experience to work with other artists for a long period of time. Um, and yeah, to be able to bounce ideas off other people, other people have helped me to come up with different ways of presenting things or different ways of doing things that have been quite helpful. And um, yeah, just meeting other like-minded artists, especially other people who have varying disabilities, which is really cool to see how other people think and do art. And uh, yeah, I'm really appreciative to Yera Sculpture Gallery and Andrea, City of Yera, et cetera, et cetera, everybody involved, City of Yera Arts and all those people. Um, but yeah, it's cool to have uh, yeah 24 hour access to a place to actually um, make stuff work. I think it makes a huge difference. Uh, I wouldn't be able to make anything of this scale without it, or the time to do it without it. Um, you know, a lot of places give you a couple days to set up, and uh, yeah, so it's cool to actually be somewhere and be making art continuously with other people. Thank you to Arts Access Victoria for the opportunity. You guys rock, and for my mentor who we've gotten through Arts Access Victoria. So. Yeah, very appreciative of everybody involved. So, hi. My name is Bram Heinrich McPardlin, Bramble for Long. Um, I am a visual artist. I'm more used to working in two-dimensional, but for this residency, I got the opportunity to work on a three-dimensional piece in accompaniment with, I think, three other works. Um, so I'm queer and disabled and those make up a large part of my identity but in addition to that I've been an artist for most of my life. Um, poetry, visual arts, pastel in particular. Um, with this body of work I'm actually exploring something both physically different in terms of what mediums I'm approaching and thematically different. So the work that I'm doing is, uh, I've had six weeks at this residency with Yarra Sculpture Gallery um, in conjunction with Arts Access Victoria and City of Yarra and I think Yarra City Arts. Um, and during this time I've focused on the extinction of the Tasmanian tiger, the thylacine. Uh, as the deliberate political action that it was. Um, the thylacine is a very, was a very important animal as the only marsupial apex predator living to modern times. Um, its extinction was more or less a constructed and deliberate thing. This is at least to me, a representation of the devaluing of other lives in reflection of the supremacy of rich white people, effectively. Um, it was uh, an action done to keep people in positions of power, in their positions of power. Moreover, it represents a devaluing of country, looking at it as a reflection of capitalist values and short-term growth being valued over any sort of sustainability. Um, I think that's carried across in my work, uh, which consists of two gouache paintings, one pastel painting, a poem and a sculpture. Uh, there's a sort of nostalgia and wistfulness that goes with the image of the thylacine, the stripes moving in the dark that even now people have a tendency to see in effectively cryptid sightings in Tasmania. So to emphasise that, I've worked with bold colours, I've worked with the shape of the thylacine sort of coming in and out of focus, um, and I personally think it's been a very effective body of work that I absolutely could not have done without access to this space, this time, this assistance that I've got during this residency. I think it's been fairly monumental as a change 
to have the opportunity to approach my art as not only a hobby but instead a passion that is given space and given a sort of freedom to explore that I haven't previously had. Uh, my name is Darren Foley. Uh, my normal practice is Aboriginal art, mainly um, painting, or I uh, use pens, and stuff like that, or wood burning. You'll see that at my artwork, part of my artwork. Um, that what I normally do. I came here to do something different. I did kind of. I um, you see the peak district did. I used resin and um, items I found around in the neighborhood, mainly in Fish Rory, around the area of Blackfellas. Um, you see why, or you know why I did that. Um, yeah, that mainly what I did here. And as I said earlier, it was an opportunity. I didn't say that, but it was an opportunity for me to do something different, something more creative. Like, don't normally do in my normal artwork.